Um, thank you, Professor Pepper, and uh, thank you also for, uh, I would like to thank ISOC and Walda Roseman in particular for the invitation to be in this forum, and uh, thanks in advance for anybody who doesn't leave the room till I am off the seat. Um, the, I think it's very hard to define the global internet in a way that satisfies everybody. There are different levels and layers of understanding. There are years of difference in understanding, so some people are content with uh, having mobile access to text or even image-based, uh, uh, icon-based systems for very simple uh, transactions. Others will actually demand that we leave behind the layers concept and do a lot of advanced things. Uh, the, uh, what people generally will recognize as uh, access to, or to the global internet will be uh, an access to interoperable networks based on open protocols, based on the IP protocol, at least for now, and I think for, for a decade or two, uh, from now, um, they will know more when it's not the internet, at least some more experienced users, they will know it's not the internet they are having access to. If it's limited in the services or the contents they can uh, access uh, through their devices of choice. And uh, of course, we can be more technical and say that uh, internet access, uh, uh, access to the global internet has to have the five everythings, uh, every port, every protocol, every content, every origin, every destination must be available. And people will react quite badly as soon as they look beyond walled gardens in, uh, or, or poorly uh, provisioned networks in developing countries and find that they don't have these five everythings available. So I will leave it there. Uh, in order for this uh, to, 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 to be the seed, possibly, of a much better definition by the time the ball reaches Eric. <laughs>